Thank you, David, and thank all of you very much for joining us together this morning uh, in our worship uh, and in our song service. We uh, appreciate all of you that are here today, and if you're visiting with us, and we want you to know that we are delighted that you've come, and we hope that you'll come again. You know, David was leading that song and asked that question, how many of you want to go to heaven? I remember the story one time about a preacher who got up in the pulpit and and he asked that question and uh, he said, all of you that want to go to heaven this morning, stand up. And everybody stood up except a little boy sitting right down on the front seat. And the preacher looked at him, he said, son, he said, don't you want to go to heaven when you die? And he said, yes, sir. And he said, well, why didn't you stand up? He said, I thought you were trying to get a load together right now. (laughs) You know, we all are thankful that God loves us. Uh, There was a story one time about an elderly woman and her little grandson. And uh, the little grandson had a face that was sprinkled with just wrinkles. Not wrinkles, but uh, freckles all over his face. And uh, anyway, they were spending the day at the zoo, and a lot of the children, you know, were in line to get their face painted with tiger paws on it. And uh, anyway, there was a little girl standing right behind him and said, you know what, you've got so many freckles, there is no place to paint. And uh, embarrassed, a little boy dropped his head, his grandmother knelt down next to him, and she said, Son, said, I want you to know that your grandmother loves your freckles. When I was a little girl, I always wanted freckles, as she was tracing her finger, you know, around on his face. And, uh, and the grandmother said, By the way, said, freckles are beautiful. And the little boy looked up and said, Really, Grandma? Are you sure? And the grandmother gave a nod and said, I'm sure. And she said, just think about it. She said, name me one thing that's prettier than freckles. And the little boy thought for a moment, peered intently into his grandmother's face, and softly whispered, wrinkles. (laughs) You know, the older we get, the more wrinkles there will be. There will be. But you know what? God loves us, freckles, wrinkles, it doesn't matter. He loves us. And I'm thankful today that he does. I'm thankful that he calls us to be baptized into Christ and to live for him. I want to talk to you this morning about the subject of baptism. People ask me the question many times, does baptism really save us? Well, let me refer you to a passage of Scripture found in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 21. When Peter was talking about the flood and Noah and eight souls that were saved by water, he said the like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us. And he says, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, I could stop right there and let you go home after about a three-minute sermon, but I'm not going to do it. (laughs) I'm going to tell you other passages of Scripture that deal with this same subject. But listen to what he says. The like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us. Now, that's the answer to the question, isn't it? Because man had sinned and left God, our Father made every effort to bring man back to himself into a harmonious relationship with God. Now, you may be a sinner this morning, and you have not been saved by the grace of God nor been immersed in water baptism. Well, I hope you'll listen very carefully to what we talk about here this morning. In the book of Romans 3 and verse 23, the apostle Paul would write, and he would say, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners. And in Acts 17, the Bible says, he made us from one blood, all nations to dwell on the face of the earth. 
And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living being or soul, Genesis 2 and verse 7. Now, when you think about baptism, I want you to think with me not only what baptism does this morning, but I want you to think about what baptism does not do. Baptism does not save us in and of itself. Now, follow what I'm saying this morning. Don't lose me. Jesus commanded it, all right. In Matthew 28 and 19, he says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Think about it. In the name of. And that little expression, in the name of, means by the authority of, or by, in this case, the authority of Christ. For in Matthew 28 and verse 18, he prefaces his, his remarks about baptism by saying, All authority hath been given unto me in heaven and on earth. So all authority belongs to Jesus. And if he authorized baptism, then certainly we ought to comply with it. But baptism alone does not save us. You see, you could get in water all day long, and that doesn't mean that you are in a saved relationship with God. We used to baptize one another. We were kids out in the lake. We had a, a lake called Big Rock Lake out north of Halsell. And kids would go out there and we'd play church and we'd baptize one another in that lake. That was immersion, all right. But it wasn't New Testament baptism as it is mentioned in the Holy Scripture. And I would tell you this morning that baptism does not save us if it was not done. And here's the big word, a little word, but a big word. If it was not done in the proper way or manner. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. You know, there are a lot of religious groups that baptize people all right. Uh, now, they do immersion, but sometimes they don't even immerse. Sometimes they sprinkle someone with water, and they don't literally baptize them into Christ. We are to be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So baptism does not save us unless we have been scripturally baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism is not to join the church. You know, there are a lot of people that believe that baptism is just simply an ordinance of the church, and so to be a member of that church, you have to be baptized into that church. Not true at all. Baptism is not for church membership, now, that's a blessing. God adds us to the church when we do. But baptism is for the remitting of sin. And so Paul explains that in the book of Romans chapter 6. If baptism alone does not save us, if it was not done from the heart. You see, when we were baptizing one another or immersing them in water out at the lake out there, and uh, you know, our heart wasn't in what we were doing. We were just jesting and joking around. Now, there are a lot of people that are baptized, but they do not do it from the heart. There's a little word that Jesus used in the book of Luke 13 and verse 3. It's the word repent. And in that, in that thought, think about this just a minute. The Bible says that we are to repent, Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, and then be baptized. Therefore, there must be something within our heart that tells us that we are sinners, we are unclean, and that we need to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, we need to be baptized. For in the book of Romans, chapter 6, the Bible says that God be thanked that you were, past tense, the servants of sin, but now you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, then being made free, you became the servants of sin of righteousness. Notice that. You obeyed from the heart. Therefore, if someone is just being baptized because their mama wants them to, or because daddy wants them to be baptized, or because a loved one wants you to be baptized, you're doing it for the wrong reason. 
If you're doing it because everybody else is getting baptized. I, I baptized a, a 98-year-old lady one time who had been baptized when she was eight years old. And she told me, she said, you know, she said, I have lived with doubt all of these years because I don't believe that I was baptized for the right reason. And she said, I want to clear it up. I want to be baptized again. And we came to the building, and at her age, I said 98, 96, she had lived with doubt for 88 years. But she said, I want to be baptized again. I want to know that I have done it for the right reason. Now, if you go to the book of Galatians 3 and verse 27 through 29, Paul says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Now, if you listen to the denominational world, they'll tell you that Jesus gets into you and then you're baptized to show you're saved. That's not harmonious with the Bible. Notice what he says. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In other words, Jesus doesn't come into our life until we get into him. Now that's exactly what he's saying. And he says there's neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free, neither male nor female. And there is neither, for, for you were all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the great promise of God. Baptism saves us upon our obedience to Christ. In the book of Acts chapter 8, uh, we're introduced to a deacon by the name of Philip, who was also called Philip the Evangelist. And uh, he was talking to a secretary of treasury from down in Ethiopia. And the Bible says that uh, he had, was reading the prophecy Isaiah, didn't know what he was reading. And the Spirit had already told Philip to go down the road that led from Jerusalem to Gaza. And as he's going down that road, he asked Philip to come into the chariot and to talk to him about God and about what this passage meant. And the Bible says that when they believed the things concerning the kingdom of God, he was baptized. Now, think about this. He said, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? He wanted to be baptized. He asked to be baptized because he understood that the real cleansing of sin comes. Not when someone just walks up to the front and says, I want to be a Christian or says, you know, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Nowhere did God ever even say that, folks. Nowhere did Jesus ever say, you want to become a Christian? Just accept me into your heart. But you know what? That's what a lot of religionists say. I can tell you that 99% of most religious groups tell you that all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. And that you are saved at that moment. Baptism alone does not save us if it was done as an infant. Now, I'm not trying to bust anybody's bubble here this morning, but I'm just simply telling you the truth of God's eternal word. A lot of people, they say, are baptized actually when they are infants. And in reality, that is not baptism. When you pour water on someone's head or you christen them, that's not New Testament baptism. For baptism is an immersion in water. And that's why it could not be administered properly to a baby. By the way, babies are innocent. They don't need to be baptized. Listen to what Jesus taught in the book of Mark chapter 16. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You have to be a believer in order to be baptized. Now, that's what God says. Little babies don't believe. Oh, they're, they're wondering who's going to change their diaper. Uh, they're, they're wondering, you know, uh, who, who's going to bring me my bottle or my pacifier or whatever it happens to be. But they are not candidates for baptism because they are not believers. That's why one has to believe. He has to understand what he is doing in order to be baptized. You see, there are conditions placed upon those who are candidates for New Testament baptism. 
The Bible says of Simon, this is Simon the sorcerer, actually in Acts chapter 8, that Simon himself also believed and was baptized. He wasn't baptized until he believed. Acts 8 and verse 13. There was a man by the name of Crispus. You may not read his name too much in the Bible, but he was a ruler of the synagogue. And the Bible says of him that he believed on Jesus or the Lord with all of his household. And many of the Corinthians hearing, get the process, hearing, believing, and were baptized. It wasn't they were baptized and cited they believed and that they listened a little bit more to the word of God. That's not what he said at all. Now, baptism alone does not save you or me if one leaves the Lord. There's a very popular theory among a lot of religious folk today. It is that you could never lose your salvation. That once you become a Christian, you're always in a saved relationship with God. Let's just say, for instance, this morning... You know, they had another mass shooting last night out in California, and 10 people were killed, 10 wounded. Let's say that young man that went in and massacred those 10 people had been baptized at some point in his life. Do you honestly believe that that young man is going to heaven? Do you honestly believe that that young man still has a close relationship with God? I don't. I don't. Nor does the Bible teach it. The Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9 says, And having been made perfect, he became, that's Christ, he became the author of eternal salvation, notice this, to all who obey him. Listen to Hebrews 6. If you believe that a person, once he becomes a Christian, he's always in a saved relationship with God, Listen to this passage. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, now listen to it, falling away means leaving God, to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify again themselves and the Son of God. And put him to an open shame. Baptism does not save you unless you live close to God. That's what the Bible says. For as the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead also. James 2. So you can tell me all day long that you're a Christian. You don't serve God. You have no works of faith. What does that tell me? You've left God. You've left the Lord. And in Revelation 2, the Bible says, Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come quickly and will remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Second chapter of the book of Revelation. Now, The Bible says in 2 Peter 2.20 that it is better for a man to have never known the way of righteousness than to know it and then depart from it. But we have a lot of people that have departed. We have a lot of people that have left God. I've spoken at many, many funerals for people that were faithful children of God. Thank God they were. But I have also spoken at memorial services for a lot of people who left God. I knew it. The family knew it. They wanted the preacher to get up and preach a bunch of sweet nothings. I wouldn't say anything disrespectful about the deceased. But I'm telling you, folks, it's something you ought to think about. You can even sit on a church pew and leave God. Factually speaking, Jesus was writing to a church in Revelation 2 when he said those words, to repent from where you have fallen. Baptism alone does not save you if it was done without proper understanding. And what I mean by that is to know why you're being baptized. Baptized. 
And that is to understand that you are a sinner, that you're in a lost condition, and that you need God's saving grace, and that God said for us to be baptized in order to have our sins remitted. In John, the sixth chapter, in verse 45, the Bible says, It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Therefore, everyone who has heard and learned from the Father, Jesus said, comes to me. We understand why baptism is administered. Did you know there actually was a case of where people were baptized again after having been baptized because they didn't understand what they were doing? In the book of Acts chapter 19, the apostle Paul had passed through the upper coast of Ephesus and he met certain men there, women too, all of them, and he asked them a question. He says, under what were you baptized? He said, if you received the Holy Spirit since you were baptized? And they said, we hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. And he said, well, why were you baptized? And he says, we were baptized under John's baptism. And the Bible says that when they heard this, they were baptized again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not baptized in the name of a church. You are not baptized in the name of a man. But you are baptized by the authority of and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For the remission of sins. I always tell people that when I'm getting ready to baptize them, I said, we're going to go down into the water, and you know that going into the water, you're a sinner. But then when you come up out of that water, you come up washed, not in water, washed in the blood of the Lamb, forgiven of all of your sins that you have committed. Baptism does not save us alone if one believed he was saved before he was baptized. Now, there's a sequence to follow. A lot of people tell others when they walk up to the front of the building that, uh, you know, and they say, I want to become a Christian. Uh, preachers would say, well, you're just saved right where you are. Just accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and you're saved right there. Not true, folks. Not true. Fake news. False. I would tell them that they have to believe in Jesus Christ and have a penitent heart that says, I want to be immersed in water that my sins might be washed away in the blood of Jesus Christ. And baptism puts one into Christ, Romans chapter 6. When they had written Paul about, by the way, about their salvation, Paul writes back and says, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life. Notice that the newness of life did not come at the church pew but the newness of life started when one was birthed of water. Do you know that when we are born physically we are born of water? You're housed in your mother's womb in water. And you were born out of water. And when Jesus gave the commandment for men to be born again in John the third chapter, verse 3 through 5, he is saying that we're going to be born again of the water and the Spirit. Now that's what the new birth is. The new birth is not saying I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's not the new birth. That's a confession of faith. But the new birth is when one is baptized into Christ, lowered in water, and raised out of water. And if one believed that he was saved prior to his baptism, he was not baptized in the right way and for the right thing. And I would encourage you to be baptized again.
Now, that's what the Word of God teaches. And since salvation is in Christ, salvation could not have occurred before baptism because the only way you get into Jesus Christ is by being baptized into him. And that's what the Word of God says. You're baptized in water, and through that process, Christ comes into your life. And you begin to live the new life being birthed out of water. You know, God's always used water, hadn't he, to create things. Did you know this earth at one time was submerged under water? And God said, let the dry land appear. And isn't it interesting that when he decided to give the earth a new birth... He told Noah to build an ark because I'm going to flood the earth. And archaeologists and scientists tell us that the whole, the stratosphere of the earth bears it out. That at one time this earth was under water again. And so when you go back and you look at that verse in 2 Peter... For God says, the like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us. Explains a lot, doesn't it? Baptism is a central part of Christianity. It is essential for you to go to heaven. I'm just the postman bringing you the message. You may not like it. But I'm telling you what God says. You know why I'm telling you that? It's because someday God's going to judge me based upon what I tell you. That's why Paul says, Woe is me if I preach not the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is essential to salvation. It is essential to becoming a member of the church. Not that we're baptized to become a member, but what happens when we are baptized parenthetically, the Bible says in Acts 2 and verse 47, that the Lord adds us to the church, such as we're being saved. Baptism is that point of change. It is. You're washing away your old life, and you've experienced a new life. In Jesus, and you're baptized to remove sin. It is the, the blood of Jesus is the only thing that takes away our sin. And the way that we reach the blood of Jesus is in that act of being baptized in water for the forgiveness of our sins. And that's what Christ said He that believeth and is baptized, listen to that. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you're saved because you believe. And they omit baptism. They say, let Jesus come in your heart. Just believe in God. But Jesus didn't teach that. Even anyone who is educated in grammar understands the grammatical expression of Mark 16. He that believeth and, that word and is a conjunction that ties two things together. And in this case, and they're both of equal value, it's belief and it's baptism. And so Jesus says, he that believeth and is baptized, pointing to the direct object here, shall be saved. When? When you believe and when you're baptized. Now, that's what Christ taught. Very simple, isn't it? And yet so many people want to misconstrue it and say all you got to do is just believe. You couldn't be saved just by being baptized <laughs> if you didn't believe. Believe and be baptized. It is a parallel to Christ's death, his burial, and his resurrection. Get this picture. Jesus died on the cross. They took his body and buried it in the heart of the earth. And the newness of life did not come into the body of Jesus 
until he came out of the grave. Death, burial, resurrection. It's the like figure, isn't it? You die to sin, Paul says in Galatians 2.20. And then you take that old sinner who has died to sin and you bury him in the water of baptism like Jesus was buried in the tomb. But you take him and you place him in water and you immerse him and you bring him up out of that water and he becomes a new creature in Christ. In Christ. Listen to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. It is important to know, my friend, one who is saved has been baptized. But not everyone who has been baptized will be saved. And baptism is not for everyone. It's not for babies. They can't believe. They don't know anything about repentance or acknowledging Christ. But the Bible teaches that babies are innocent. Jesus said in Matthew 18, Allow the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. They're saved anyway. Baptism is not for children that are not accountable. Not just babies, but young children that do not understand or know what the Bible teaches about this subject. It is not for the sinner who does not believe. It is for sinners who believe. It's not for the sinner who is unrepentant. It is for the sinner who is willing to repent and redirect his life. And in the book of Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that on that day of Pentecost that they that glad to receive the word of God were baptized. They didn't wait. They didn't hesitate like a lot of groups do. And they say, well, we're going to have a baptizing uh, uh, two times this year. <laughs> you know what? When someone responds to the call of Jesus Christ, we baptize them right then. We had a baptism last Tuesday night. We don't wait till the Lord's day. We don't wait for three months to pass. But a man's salvation hangs in the balance. So I ask you the question this morning that that Secretary of Treasury asked Philip, when they're riding along and they see a body of water, he's preached to him, Jesus. And the secretary of the treasury says, what hinders me from being baptized? And Philip says, if you believe, you may. Baptism is not something you put off. It is not something that you in your mind or saying, I'll do that next week or I'll do that next month. Uh, I'll do that some other day. I'll do that later. Why wouldn't you do it today? Today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. And to delay is to put yourself in danger. What if God called you home today? To hesitate for another week, next month, next year, who knows? What happens to your soul when you leave this world? And Christ could return at any moment. For Jesus says, no man knows the hour nor the day wherein the Son of Man will come, Matthew 24. And if that's the case, and I could die, and they could tag my body, 
I want to make sure that my spirit is right with my God. Can you say this morning, all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him and in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Are you ready to be baptized? Are you ready to answer the call of God? Why would you wait? The song we're getting ready to sing says, Because I promise, I believe. O Lamb of God, I come. Let us stand and let us sing.